Brewing coffee is a very lengthy and never-ending science project. So coffee is the roasted seed of a coffee fruit. And it got the name bean, and I'm not exactly sure why, except that it turns out that the Arabic word for raw coffee in general is bun. You know, if you're a barista, you're making hundreds of cups a day, and you can get really good at noticing which factors make a difference and how you can improve it a little bit in this way or a little bit in that way. And that's really unlike almost any other food product that we deal with. So the cupping is the beginning, it's the start. Cupping has been around as a tradition for roasters to figure out the price that they might want to charge for a coffee. And we as coffee professionals use it as more of a, a means for figuring out how we want to brew that coffee in a follow-up brew method. What this allows us to do is take as many of those variables out of the process of coffee brewing as we can so that we're just tasting the variables that are presented by the coffee itself. So step number one, we're going to smell the coffee dry. We're getting to know Colombia Lagondrina, roasted by counterculture coffee. And the reason why we have several samples is because perhaps one of these has some type of defect and so it doesn't ruin the whole cupping. I'm smelling uh, a lot of like molasses and some cherry, mm -hmm. specifically like more of a dried cherry. Step number two, get our hot water kettle and uh, blast these babies. The hot water, compared to cold water, has much more energy. Water molecules are bouncing off each other in a very forceful way. And when you put the coffee bean particles into water, the rate at which you get stuff out depends on the force with which those water molecules are going to bash into the bean and bounce back out. Go time. Ready, go. We're pouring pretty vigorously and making sure that we wet all of the grounds on the first pour. Once we've got all the water in there, we don't want to agitate those grounds at all. If we agitate them, they'll extract more and different cups will taste different. It's starting to become more candied, a little bit more intense. The citrus that I was talking about is really taking a background of those cherry aromas. Yeah, it's like putting your nose into a bowl of maraschino cherries entrapped in molasses. Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty good. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good analogy. The next stage is what we call the break. There are a bunch of aromatic gases trapped under that crust. So the next thing we'll do at about four minutes is we'll break the crust with the back of our spoons and get our noses right up there to capture those aromatic gases as they're being released from under the crust. And now we're just going to skim the top of the sample so that we get all the dust and fines that are floating on the top. And then you're going to taste it exactly the way your mother always told you not to drink soup, which is to say we're going to slurp it as loudly as possible. The reason that you slurp, you're aerating the coffee, which opens up some of the flavor compounds that are in there. You are spraying it all across your mouth. You're turning some of that liquid into a vapor so that you can smell much more accurately while you're tasting. And we spit it out so we don't get too over-caffeinated. True story. Basically, the things that come out early are small molecules and very water-soluble molecules, so acids. The things that come out very late do tend to be bitter and do tend to be astringent. So we're tasting for four different qualities of the coffee at this point. Acidity, which we think of as anything that you could think of as a fruit flavor. Flavor, anything essentially that you're tasting that isn't acidity body, how the coffee sits on your tongue and in your mouth and how it feels. Is it dusty? Is it silky? Is it pillowy? Is it heavy? So the last thing, appropriately enough, is the aftertaste. What goes on in your mouth sort of right now while we're talking. So once we know what the coffee should taste like, we'll then go to a brew method and we'll have a base recipe that we start all of our coffees from. From there, knowing what this coffee should taste like, we'll be able to tweak variables one by one until we arrive at our ideal expression of the flavor and balance and texture of this coffee. Yeah. I think the unique thing about coffee is that it's a relatively simple product whose quality you can change very easily in the very few steps that are involved in preparing it. 
Uh, once you get obsessed by these <laughs> details, that's where a lot of the, the geekiness comes in. Finding and tweaking different brewing methods to get them to be as controllable as possible. Mm.